Okay, hi, what's up? My name is Jordan, if you're new here, and if you're not, welcome back to my channel. Um, actually, one year ago, I made a video all about Felix, who is here laying in my lap, who is my baby Bernese mountain dog puppy. Yeah, he actually turns one on this Saturday, um, on the 22nd, the day after my birthday. We're both Geminis, um, we love that for us. But yeah, so he turns one, so I figured, you know, what better time to do a one year puppy update? Because I still could consider him a puppy, and I know you guys have had a lot lot a lot of questions about him in the comments of that video and just I get DMs all the time about him in general so I kind of wanted to cover all the frequently asked questions and just like update you on him because he's my pride and joy um, as you can see he is just a big lover this is what he does all day every day if I were to sit on the couch all day every day this is how he would be and he's our baby so but yeah if you want to see him this is he's not even gonna get up to introduce himself apparently Felix, you're on camera, buddy. Anyway, so I have a list on my phone um, of some like topics that I kind of wanted to touch on, different things like that. And I'm gonna run through like the background of why we picked a Bernie's Mountain Dog and different things like that. Um, so my husband and I both have wanted like a big dog for a long time. We've been together for a long time and we knew that once we moved out and we got our own house and stuff, we wanted a dog. Um, but we were kind of going back and forth on what kind of breed. Like I said, we did always want a Bernese Mountain Dog, but there were still other options. Like I grew up with St. Bernard's and so St. Bernard's were always, always were like, no, you are only getting a St. Bernard because they're like amazing, perfect dogs. Um, but then I was like, you know what, maybe I want to try a new breed. And so I started looking into breeds and I found Bernese Mountain Dogs. And then after that, my husband and I were just obsessed with them. They're so beautiful. We were watching compilations all the time and like all of that kind of stuff. And then immediately once we bought our house, we basically knew we wanted a dog and we knew that we wanted to bring these mountain dog. Like I said, after watching all these compilations, I joined Facebook groups. I was very heavily in the Bernese Mountain Dog community. I was like a watcher, a lover, and we did our research where we found a breeder in Michigan that met all of our qualifications, um, an ethical breeder and different things like that. So make sure you do your research, of course, if you are looking into a Bernese Mountain Dog. If that's the one thing that you take from this video, if you are looking for one, do your research and find an ethical, uh, ethical certified breeder, health certified, genetic testing, all of that kind of stuff. So many resources that you can look for that kind of stuff on databases and different things, and I'll link them down below. Um, so hopefully that might help you out. That's kind of a daunting task, but I'll link everything that I can below. Uh, but yeah, so we decided on a Bernie's Mountain Dog, and spoiler alert, we're so glad that we did, right? Yeah, look, at he's literally just going to lay here this whole time. Of course, we wanted a burner because of their personalities, how goofy they are, and just how First of all, of course, beautiful and aesthetic they are. They're just like jaw dropping in my opinion before I ever had one, you know, when you see a burner um, and they're just so beautiful and big and like luscious. Is that a word that I would describe? Um, and I just always admired them. And then also along with their, of course, like I said, goofy personalities and like smarts, they're so intelligent and sweet. They're little sweethearts, well, big sweethearts. And it was just like every single quality that we were looking for in a dog a Bernese Mountain Dog matched. Good with kids, good with other animals, everything like that. Of course, everyone who owns a Bernese Mountain Dog, I mean, you ask any burner owner and they almost say like, I will never get another breed. I love Bernese Mountain Dogs. They're like, they will fight to the death about Bernese Mountain Dogs. And I get why, like they really are so special like so many different dog breeds in my lifetime we grew up with dogs all the time at my house um i've had st bernard's pugs pomeranians uh newfoundland like all of these breeds and i've been around so many like golden retrievers and everything and felix specifically i don't know if it's all burners but i attribute that to you know of course him and his personality but being a bernese mountain dog oh he's gonna sit here with me now you're gonna show them your face now Look, V. Yeah, like I was saying, Felix is just this very, very special dog, and I will say that until the day I die, that he is the most special dog that I've ever had, ever met. You can say maybe it's just because he's my dog, like the only dog that I've owned, like on my own without my parents and family and stuff. He's just so perfect to me. He's the sweetest dog I've ever met. He's the goofiest. He's the, literally the most intelligent dog that I have ever, ever met. And it kind of blows Jared and I's mind like most of the time and most days when we just like are talking to him and training him and different things like that. It blows my mind still to this day. Um, I know it's different for all breeds and different like 
specific dogs and everything, but we were looking for a dog breed um, or just a dog in general that was very active and wanted to go outside with us and go on walks and go on hikes and stuff. And so I really think that we nailed it with him because he's like not overly, like he doesn't need like so much exercise, whereas like, because we do work a lot and stuff, but he loves to go outside, he loves to go on walks, he loves to play, and he loves to go on hikes and different things like that. Whereas my St. Bernard's growing up, you took them down the street for a walk and they would sit immediately in the road and you would have to like pull them home. Um, but him on the other hand loves it. Of course, when you're thinking about owning a Bernese Mountain Dog, you have to think of all of, like the very sad things um, that comes with it, you know, lifespan and genetic diseases that are like, that they're more prone to and different things like that. Um, and you have to really take those seriously because I've seen so many things like real life stories about it. And they're true, you know, obviously that's why there are scientific studies and stuff, but um, you do have to take that into account for personally, we outweighed the pros and cons and you know, obviously the pros won, uh, which is why we have him. But that is something that I want to make sure that you guys think about as well. If you are not a burner owner yet, and are thinking about it, you do have to think about the sad truth of maybe a shorter lifespan. And like I said, I grew up with giant breed dogs, so I kind of like already had that in my head as being like the typical age, you know? Um, but I have seen burners that are like 12 and 13 on Facebook group, which makes my heart so happy. And I'm manifesting that he's going to be one of those. So yeah, let's go into Felix himself. Okay, the actual update on him. He has turned out to be the the funniest, the sweetest, and the most stubborn, um, most intelligent dog that I never expected when we first got him. He was silly and everything and so smart. He was smart since the day we brought him home. He learned to sit on the first day and he's just a genius, right? Yeah, you know you are. He's so calm right now. Uh, but I would describe him as a human. He really reminds me of a human. His eyes. When I look into them, I'm like, you have human eyes. You have like person eyes. And I think that's what I love most about him. It's like all day, every day, because we both work from home, that we have a friend here and he definitely is a shadow dog. Um, I've heard this a lot as well from other Bernese owners, but he will follow me around all day long. He doesn't care if he's in my way. He doesn't care if I'm carrying two loads of laundry up the stairs. He wants to be right next to me. And I love that, to be honest. Um, so if you don't want a detached dog, I don't know, but he's very attached, but not like in a bad way, like negative, like um, anxious. He's fine when we leave and different things like that. He doesn't have separation anxiety, thank God, because we um, worked on that a lot, like to prevent that whenever he was a puppy by crate training him and different things like that, which I'll get into in the future um, in this video. But yeah, personality wise, he is exactly what I would want in a dog. And like I said, I'm not just saying that because he's my dog and I love him. Um, I mean that that's, that's literally what we were looking for in a dog. And we got very, very lucky. Being said, when we do go on walks, he is a little bit more anxious around other dogs and other people. I think he's a little bit more protective, which I didn't really know that Bernese mountain dogs could be like kind of more protective, which I actually do like because, you know, for safety reasons. Um, but we are we're working on not barking at strangers outside and when people like knock on the door and stuff he like he gets very protective and does like his big boy bark <laughs> that's what we call it but yeah favorite 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 things to do are go on walks and to play outside in the backyard and we have about an acre of land and he likes to just go run it in circles that's his favorite thing to do and he loves that and he loves to play with his little soccer ball which we have and then he likes to play with tennis balls and tennis balls that squeak are his number one favorite we get like the big ones at our premier pet supply or pet supplies plus whatever um and he loves them so much especially because they squeak um he loves to play fetch now he finally learned fetch he got the point that he'll get it back if he gives it to me and yeah those are his favorite activities i'll show you at the end some of his favorite toys and products that we love and stuff like that and just like products i love for him and yeah he's a lover he wants to love and kiss everyone that he comes into contact to he just almost a little bit too much because right now we are currently working on training him to stay down um, because when people come over he wants to get on their level and be able to kiss their face and different things like that and when he was little it was fine so this is a PSA for any dog that you have even if it's not a Bernese train them young I wish I would have done this train them young to sit and stay down whenever people come in or whenever he comes into contact with anyone um, because he likes to do that on walks too which is not good and it's hard to reverse when he has like a habit more so you know um so once we really actually try to train him i know that he'll get it but it's just right now it's a struggle and it's very 
I would say embarrassing and it's also like no because he's so big too people get like scared of him and scared that he's like going to hurt them when he does that even though he just wants to like love and kiss and stuff and be a lover but you know people don't know that who don't know him and I totally get that so that's our thing that we are working on currently but otherwise for training he has been a dream to train and like we're not trainers or dog trainers or anything and I think also another part of that is that he didn't get much socialization because we kind of got him in the middle of the pandemic and we weren't able to like take him to dog parks and take him to pet smart and different things like that to walk around and meet other dogs or just like meet other dogs and friends and stuff so you know it's gotten a lot better in the past few months when we were able to do that stuff but I think that might be a little bit about it because I would assume in like a normal world in life that we would have had him in um, we would have taken him out a lot more places and trained him had to have trained him sooner on that stuff he loves his cats he has two cats at, at home our other two pets are both cats and he's best friends with both of them in separate ways one he likes to play with and fight with <laughs> gently might I add he he knows leave it and he knows um, like gentle so he'll get more gentle or just leave them alone whenever we say that but otherwise he loves to cuddle with our one cat and they touch at each other all day every day I don't know if, if I have any clips I'll add them in but they love to play with each other all day every day and just lay with each other um, which is the cutest thing ever my dad they're all best friends which you know makes my pet mom heart happy loves being around my parents dogs and everything like that so those are of course pluses I'm not really so also something that he loves to do are play puzzle games um, so we have picked out a few I'll show them like I said later in the video but he like they're called like brain games I think where you put the treat and he has to like move all these little parts to get them out he really likes to use his brain and I've noticed that's what really wears him out and gets him tired uh, of course in conjunction with like going outside on daily walks and different things like that but like especially that that really gets him like tuckered out so okay so the next segment I have is training which very big segment um, because it's one of the most important if not the most important because especially for big dogs I mean it is for little dogs but you know they can't hurt as much or like do as much <laughs> as a big dog so I would say that that's one of the most important things that I wanted to touch on training him though has been so easy um, I mean I don't want to paint it like that it had, there have been very hard times and things that he's currently still working on but for the most part like obedience and just in general like um, trick training and different things like that he's been really great with he responds very well to food so maybe that's it um, he's very food motivated so I don't know what we would do if he wasn't um, but he can learn things really really quickly like I'll accidentally teach him things sometimes like I accidentally taught him high five one day um, maybe I'll show, show you guys some of his tricks soon too because I think I did that in the last pup date that I did so as far as crate training goes we did crate train him from the day he got home until I think I want to say he was about six months still goes in his crate whenever we leave which we've been testing like that lately and he's been very good about it like leaving him out while we run to to get coffee or something and he's been fine and we put the cameras up and watch him um, but other than that he stays in his big crate that I have behind me it's like a playpen almost um, just to give him more space personally that's what I'm most comfortable with but for the majority of the first six months at least he was in his pen um, like an actual dog crate with four sides you know he did really well with that and then yeah so he does sleep with us um, like you said he has for six months not always in the bed sometimes he'll lay on the floor do whatever uh, which also I've seen people argue with in the group which I don't really get because it's like if it's their dog or our dog not really what does it matter to you but um yeah so he does sleep with us he does really well and honestly I think that that ever since he started sleeping with us he's been like 20 times more lovey I don't know but yeah he loves to sleep with us he loves to lay in the middle of our bed we have a king size bed and it's just Jared and I so you know he does fit fine um people always say that how do you sleep with him in your bed how do you do that I'm like I don't know I love it I love when he's laying on me I don't care if I have this much of the bed as long as he's next to me it's like my favorite thing ever so if that's not your thing I get it but it is my thing and Jared's as well so we love it and before that we crate trained him and he had his crate next to our bed and different things like that um, always in our room though he knows a lot of commands such as down uh, leave it gentle <coughs> toy there we go he knows quiet he, he knows sit he knows high five <laughs> he punches me in the face can you speak <coughs> oh good boy all right quiet good boy um, he knows lay, he knows up, he knows, like I said, down. I'm um, trying to think of different things that he knows. He knows eat, he knows food, he knows streets, he knows all of those kind of things, which some of them we did not even teach him. He knows car, he knows pup cup, um, he knows walk, 
he knows all of these things. Sorry, buddy, none of them are happening right now, but um, yeah. And he's very obedient and he loves to learn and he loves to, I think like one of the think about burners are that they really are people pleasing. They wanna please their owner and they want to be obedient, different things like that and learn. And so that has been great. That's why I think he learns so well, um, you know, along with that he really just loves to learn. He loves learning, he loves treats too. So again, maybe a different thing too. Now uh, we're just struggling with jumping on people and barking. We were struggling with taking him on walks and he was pulling um, and different things like that. But for that, we got him, for that we got him a no pull harness, which is where we just put like the um, leash on the front of the harness, which has helped so, so, so much. Like I can't even say, enough good things about that harness that I found on Amazon, I believe. I think it was like under $20. And then a leash as well, it's like a no pull leash, but I'm not sure the leash does as much as the harness does. Um, but yeah, nonetheless, I really love those products and that has turned his whole demeanor while walking around because he just, you know, they're pulling dogs that they can, I think they can pull up to like 3,000 pounds or 1,500 pounds or something and, and like a cart and stuff. Um, so he loves to pull and he loved doing that. But now since starting that, he has minimized it so, so, so much much and it's way more manageable. Now whenever I say no pull or stay here and then he'll, you know, listen and it's a lot better for walks and it's more fun for, you know, the owners and us. And he loves to, as far as potty training goes, I want to say he was potty trained the first few weeks that we got him because we were really, really strict. We also work from home so it was maybe a little bit easier for us. Um, we would just take him out every 20 to 30 minutes and that's one of the other like biggest pieces of advice that I would give any like new puppy owner in general um, is to really focus on potty training and you have to be like good about when they're not in the crate to take them out every 20 to 30 minutes so that if they do have to pee or they think about it they can go so yeah and then also what we did and i've heard is really helpful and i truly do believe is a really important thing is to not let them play when they go out when they're young outside where they're supposed to go potty at least and so they really get it in their head that like this is where you go to the bathroom not play and not so they're there because they think that's where they play or something like that um like i said i'm not a dog trainer or anything but that's just what i've gathered and i'll also leave some resources down for training that i've been watching since I got him um, from a few different trainers. There's one like burner trainer specifically, and then there are a few that are just like general dog trainers that have been really, really helpful for me that I think you guys might like. Yeah, so overall he's very trained. He's really obedient and he loves to learn. Um, the only thing right now is he's testing boundaries and we know that. So yeah, we've been trying to, trying to counteract that and realize, have him realize he does not get to make his own decisions all the time because um, he'll want to, because we'll be in a rush to go and we'll say okay pen and he'll have to go into his pen and he'd like look at us like we're like joking and then he'll slowly walk towards it, and then he just sat down in front of it yesterday and he was like no I'm not going in and I'm just like no you're going in you gotta go we gotta go and um so then he went in but that that's like just an example of one of the things he's testing boundaries for which I think is normal for his age he's one and also he has not been neutered yet I know that's also controversial but from my research and um our breeders recommendation and our vets recommendation we are waiting probably until he's a year and a half to get neutered um do your own research on that don't listen to me on that i really wasn't even gonna mention it but um yeah just in case so now here's felix's journey with food and like vitamins and stuff so the original food that i had him on was from's large breed puppy and i loved that i love from's i love the ingredients i love their whole mission i just love that brand and company um but unfortunately they only have one large breed puppy formula and it has chicken in it and we he was fine for the first i want to say four, five, six months. It was a, it was a long, long time. Um, and he was fine with it. And then one day his stomach, he's, I noticed like when he was going to the bathroom, it was just really runny and not good. And he would have like stomach aches and have to go to the bathroom a lot. And I was like, I wonder what it is. So then I looked it up and did all this research and stuff. I tried to calm his tummy down and I put him on like a bland diet of boiled chicken and rice and then like Greek yogurt and stuff like that. Um, and pumpkin and that's supposed to like calm their stomachs and help them feel better. What are you doing? <laughs> Can you come this way? 
Thank you. It's supposed to like make them feel better in their stomachs and settle their stomachs and stuff. Unfortunately, it did not. It kind of like made it worse, I think, because it was a little chicken in it. And then I realized it might be the chicken. And so then I cut the chicken out. I replaced it and just did rice for like a few meals. And then I added in boiled beef. And that's when it started to get a lot, lot better. But that was like one of the hardest times and what hardest parts um, of owning him was trying to figure out what was wrong with him and different things like that. And it's a very, very common in dogs in general. I think it's the most common food allergy is chicken, but especially Bernese mountain dogs. I, I see it all the time that, especially when they're puppies, you get to know that a lot of them are allergic to chicken. And so that is the case with this guy. And so now he is on lamb and rice formula by Diamond Naturals. Yeah, the Diamond Naturals large breed puppy lamb and rice formula, which is fine. I did want from because I liked the ingredients more. And it doesn't like seem like there are a lot of, and I've done my research beyond what I'd like to admit. I kind of obsess over it because I really like them to have really good ingredients. But you know, that's what he's on right now. I'm hoping to be able to go back to Frum's um, whenever he gets to like adult food, which I'm not really sure when is supposed to be. So I'm gonna have to actually talk, talk to my vet about that soon. But um, yeah, so that's what he's on. And he also takes two supplements a day. Well, one supplement, but two tablets of it. And it's the Casaquin um, joint supplement. It's just like a healthy joint supplement. And I've heard that it, and I was recommended by a bunch of different Bernie's mountain dog owners and they swear by it, that it helps their joints as they grow. So I give him two a day. I think like technically if they have a joint problem or different things, you can, do different amounts and like more. We find that at Costco in a big jar. I think it's on Chewy.com and different things like that too. But um, of course do your research before giving your dog anything, but that's what he's on. And I might just add it to his food. And like I said, they're at Costco, I think for $30 for like 140 of them or something. Now he's also going through a picky period with food where he doesn't even like his dry food. I forgot to mention that, which I don't know what's going on. I have to do some research on it because he's just like, I think he's bored of it. And he's just being, like I said, testing boundaries. And he knows that I'll give him more in it because I just want him to eat. Um, which I know probably isn't what's recommended by a lot of people, but that's what I do. Um, so in addition with the um, his hard kibble, I mix in like a wet food, which is from Frums, and it's like their lamb formula and their venison formula. There are a few different ones, and I'll mix that in with his, and he eats it right up. Um, like I said, trying to figure that out currently, but that's just what I'm doing, honestly. His favorite snacks and treats, he loves his Kong. I fill, he has like four Kongs, and I fill them with peanut butter, bananas, blueberries, carrots, um, strawberries. Sometimes I'll add a little bit of those in. He loves all of those different things and I'll fill those and then I'll freeze them um, and I'll put those in the freezer for the week, like I said, and give them one throughout the week um, to you know lick and chew on and stuff. He loves them so much. He knows when I'm grabbing one because he'll go to the freezer and wait for me to hand it to him and then he'll run back with it in his mouth onto his bed and lay down and go through it. So yeah, that's one of his favorite things and I highly recommend those um, when they're a puppy. If you are busy and you're working and stuff like that, um, that really, occupies their time in their mouth and also gets their energy out. And I think it's also soothing for them um, because like the action of looking, I think is soothing. I don't know if that's just for cats or not, but yeah. Next segment is shedding and grooming. So currently we get him groomed at our groomers every, I wanna say eight weeks, eight, eight to 10 weeks probably. And he always comes back beautiful as ever um, and fluffy and he just gets washed, blow dried, um, and then like trimmed up and his nails cut and stuff and his ears cleaned. do cut his hair or anything, but he does get like a nice spa treatment day and he loves them, right? Loves our groomer. She actually just got a Bernie's Mountain Dog too, which is so fun. But um, yeah, actually has to, I have to call soon. I think probably tomorrow I need to call it because he's, he's due. He's a little uh, stinky, but yeah, you can groom him yourself. I wanna say it's about $100 including tip every time we go. Um, the past few times, I think when he was smaller, it was less, but as they get bigger, you know, and as there are bigger, I think the grooming price goes up. Um, but if you do it yourself, you know, I would just recommend doing it often if you don't want hair all over your house, because that is one thing. I knew going into owning a Bernese Mountain Dog, and I knew growing up, like I said, with St. Bernard's and dogs in general, was, you know, hair. But we have, like you see, a white couch, and he has, as you see, black fur, and it likes to, like when he needs to be groomed like this, come off in clumps and it just, especially in shedding seasons, just covers the nice white couch, which is fine. Like I said, I don't care, but it is something that you should be um, aware of. 
but to us it's completely worth it. The vacuum that we use is this one. We use the Dyson V11 Animal and we highly, highly recommend it. It's just like rechargeable and cordless, which makes it 10 times easier to just be able to vacuum every day. Um, you can reach, you know, under a lot of different things and we can vacuum the couch with, with it. It has different attachments that you can take off and put here. Um, but yeah, I thought I'd mention this because it really has been like my holy grail. He doesn't like it so much, which is why he just left. But um, yeah, we swear by this. And I also, sorry, the cat toy. Um, but we swear by this and I really think it's something that, I think it's a really, really amazing vacuum. And with his thick fur, you know, you just, dump this out as you can see he has a lot of it in there but highly recommend i'll link that down below as well in case you're interested i think they have different versions of it but that's just the animal one that we have and i don't know the difference that much but also another thing is health insurance which is something that a lot of i think dog owners in general go through like the um question of should they get health insurance is it worth it and especially for Brittany's mountain dog owners because of their like um you know genetics so we did decide to get pet insurance for him we went through i think it's just called pet insurance like by nationwide and we love it so far we've only used it i think once and that was just for like a checkup because we got the ones one that's like any visit um you can get like a portion back or whatever you kind of customize it to what you want on the site but that's what we went through and we wanted it just in case of anything we thought that it was just smart for our lifestyle personally and our you know family um but just thought i'd mention that really quick that we do go through nationwide a really easy process to do claims and everything so yeah lastly i think i'm gonna go through and show you his favorite toys and uh, my favorite toys for him that you know keep him occupied and happy and then a couple of my favorite products besides the vacuum um, that I'll share with you. So let's go do that. Okay, so first off, like I said, he really, really loves these dog puzzles. Um, I think you can find them on Amazon or just at your local pet store. And this one specifically is the easy skill level. So this was the first one we got him. Then we have another one and I can't find it right now, but um, this is the one we started with. And then this is like level three advancement one. And where you like put the treats in there and then you kind of like do this with them so it kind of locks it. You do it. Um, it locks it so the treats are in there and he has to get them out. And he loves it. <laughs> it occupies him for like a good 20, 30 minutes and he figures it out. And every time he gets a little bit faster, which is, you know, is great because brain function. But um, yeah, and this right here is his big ball I squeaks at some point but he loves his big tennis ball um he only plays with this he doesn't get to like chew on it or anything but it's kind of like a fetch thing and same with toys like this love to play fetch with those and like tug of war and then his other favorites are these little like pigs that squeak you love these ones don't you and then this is a new favorite that he really loves to chew on see there we go oh all right bye and his little bed out there with all of his other toys surrounding it, but yeah. And then this is like a look into his pen. We just have it in like our den room. Um, and it's just like a big, it's kind of like a pet slash kid play pen, but it works perfectly for him because, you know, he's scared of it. He doesn't try to get out or anything. Like he's not scared of it, but like, he know, he doesn't know that he can open the door even if it's like not locked. Um, so, you know, that might be a him thing, but it works great for us. It's from Amazon and it just like closes like this. I'll link it down below as well. And then we just put, oops, but then we just put like a blanket that we bought specifically for him. And then his dog bed is from Chewy, which is like a nice, like a nice little mattressy kind of one. Very comfortable and good for his joints. And another recent favorite toy has been this. We got this at Target and it was just a random purchase and he really loves it. You, It came with like three little squirrels and he, they have to like pull them out. And so he loves to pull them out and play with these. He likes to play fetch with these. Um, and I thought I'd mention that because they're super cute and they squeak as well. And I think it was from BarkBox um, at Target. Um, also, he loves bully sticks. Uh, he loved these. See, he's gonna come. Oh, nope, down. Boy. Good boy. Um, but the thing with bully sticks is that they could cause problems if, like, you don't take them away from them and they swallow it whole or something. Um, because, you know, it was like three times as tall and then he, you know, ate it. But then I like to take them away when they're about, like, this size, just so nothing gets blocking or anything. Another thing that I would highly recommend is this carpet spot remover. It was very, very. Um, helpful whenever he was potty training the couple times he had accidents on our rug 
very, very helpful, this Folex um, carpet spot remover, but also for your couches whenever he comes in with muddy paws or just gets food on the couch or anything, um, this is very helpful. This was the harness that I was talking about. See, so this would go on his top right up here and it has this little tab right here that we would put the leash on. Um, and then the leash looks like this. If you can see that, it has like these two little pulley things. So whenever he pulls, it kind of like, it's very structured. I think we're going on a W-A-L-K. Um, but he graduated to a wild one, harness and leash set, which are super cute. Let me show you his, um, his good, good boy stay. Let me show them your collar. So we got the collar, like I said, from Wild One, which is amazing and beautiful, one of our favorite companies. And then Chewy is where this thing is from, it's a cute little tag, and I thought it was super cute for, <laughs> and I thought it was super cute for some. You wanna go outside? You wanna show them you're outside? You wanna go outside? Huh? Okay. This is his yard. We're currently in the process of getting him a fence right now, but for now he has one of these like 100 foot leash things that just, you know, he can roam and do whatever, um, but then he doesn't go too far. Even though he is trained and he knows where he can't go and stuff, but we just do it just in case he sees like a dog walking or someone and he just like doesn't think I do not want to cause any issues, even though we're always out here with him, but um, you know. Show him some of your tricks you want to. These are some banana bites. They're like hardened bananas or I don't know, like baked bananas or something. All right, can you stay? Thank you. Good boy, come. Good boy. Sit. Good boy. Come. Uh-uh. Sit. Good boy. Can you lay down? Oh, good boy. Oh, he gets confused to speak because we always tell him quiet. Speak. Oh, anyway, those were just a few of his tricks. Um, but yeah, he loves to just wander around the backyard now. Sorry, the grass is kind of like wacky looking, but you know. Another toy that he absolutely loves, and this is nice for us because Go get it. Good boy. Bring it back. Come on, bring it. Bring it back. What about this fee? Oh, he's about to go to the bathroom. Okay. Get it, sit. Oh, okay, or lay. Watch this. Go get it. He loves that toy. Don't you? Yeah, is that one your favorite? I forgot to mention that he is 110-ish pounds. We haven't weighed him in a while, but that was what he was last. 110, so um, yeah, at a year old, I would say that's pretty good. Um, he's nice and chunky, but he's still short and tiny to me. Everyone says he's so big and grows all the time, but I don't notice it yet, um, but yeah. <laughs> but anyway, we are going to play outside some more. He's very excited, um, and we'll talk to you guys later. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any more questions, um, I'm, my DMs are always open. If you are looking for a burner or any advice on anything like that, um, or questions just in general, please let me know. I love to help you guys out. Also, Felix is in all of my vlogs, so you know, feel free to look out for those when they come out or watch the old ones. Um, and don't forget to subscribe. Uh, we'll talk to you guys later. Bye!